So David Attenborough is one of the best known faces on television. He recently turned 89. The celebration of his gift as a presenter of nature uh, have been truly international. Without doubt, he is one of the world's leading figures of our time. He represents ecology, a role model of extraordinary talent and wisdom. And uh, so shortly we'll see David Attenborough talk about the need for children today to live in more than just an urban landscape, as 50% of the world's population moves to cities and lives in cities, this becomes crucial. But before we just turn to him in action, here comes his connection to New Zealand Methodism, very recent. Paul Titus, editor of Touchstone, the Methodist Church monthly broadsheet, recently interviewed David Attenborough. And we will come to that interview after we've seen uh, David in action. But because it has a powerful link uh, the urban landscape, to John Wesley's great sermon on the imperfection of human knowledge. I think it sums up society's greatest need today and why the Christian church has to act now. So let's, without any further ado, look at what Sir David Attenborough has got to say. Natural spaces are essential for human development and well-being, and none more so than those we set aside for the use of our children. A school playground is a vital space. Now imagine, if you will, five extra classrooms being built on this one, and then add to that 150 more children This is the nature of the problem facing schools today. The hundreds of thousands of additional school places needed to accommodate the growing number of children in this country are putting our school grounds under threat. Children need to have contact with nature on a daily basis. Access to open space aids concentration and learning, fuels curiosity and feeds their natural sense of exploration. But increasingly, our children are living in dense urban conurbations with little or no green space. For many of them, the only contact they get is in their school grounds. But the increase in the number of children is putting this contact at risk as the need to build more classrooms on school grounds increases. Whether they are studying bugs, watching tadpoles, seeing how plants grow, or feeling the changes in the seasons, children are learning why nature is important. There is no way of getting away from the need to create extra spaces. But do we have to take away our children's school grounds? There are alternatives. We can use unused buildings in the community. We can timetable greater use of the school grounds, split days. And if we have new school buildings, how can we ensure that what is left gives the biggest and richest outdoor learning experience. If children don't grow up knowing about nature and appreciating it, they will not understand it. And if they don't understand it, they won't protect it. And if they don't protect it, who will? Uh, 
uh, just like uh, David Attenborough, John Wesley was one of the leading figures of his time and place. We might not think of 18th century Britain as very important to society or our knowledge today, but Wesley had a crucial insight identical to Attenborough. And the insight was a method for changing things by changing ourselves, by changing our way of thinking. His insight was, well, it was actually much more than an insight. It was like Attenborough's, an all-encompassing passion. We could sum it up by saying to understand and communicate at depth how we find ourselves as a species in the natural world. To quote Wesley, the desire of knowledge is a universal principle in man, fixed in his inmost nature, and it is insatiable. Unquote. This is the first for July in our series through the year with John Wesley. And this month we'll concentrate on how Wesley constantly strove. He wanted to get his lay preachers, lay and ordained, acquainted with science. More than acquainted, he wanted them to be as intoxicated with the natural world as he was. Attenborough is, of course, an agnostic, but in love with the natural world. Wesley was a convinced Christian, but in love with the natural world. To which he added that the natural world declared the glory of God. So the difference between the two is not so great. We will explore Wesley's sermon on the imperfection of human knowledge and discover how narrow the gap really is between the Christian believer and the agnostic and in fact the atheist. Equally, we'll see how that can be magnified up by zealots until it seems like a chasm exists between the two views. And that's just what happened to the Touchstone interview with David Attenborough. Wonderful interview. But overzealous opponents squaring off around a debate about evolution. You can see it emerge at the forums in our sixcenses.nz website. Click the latest news at the landing page. Register to join in. Join the dialogue. And each Wednesday at 10 in the morning, the Practical Theology channel will publish another video in this series about that sermon. The second will explore Wesley's belief in reason, the case of reason considered. The third will explore the limitations of reason and the need for constant experiment. And the final will show how these sermons need to be recast for today's world. So, Subscribe to be informed. Meantime, sixcenses.nz and the Practical Theology channel acknowledge with gratitude the use of Sir uh, uh, David Attenborough's Creative Commons video and Touchstone for publishing the original material. Like President Obama, we add our appreciation of this wonderful life and talent. Thanks for watching.